I realized that I put myself and my entire family in danger. My old pain booth was a potential bomb and yours might just be as well. I've spent a huge amount of time researching. So in this video, I'm going to put my findings and conclusions into a new safe paint booth. And I'm going to build it right here in my garage in this corner. As you can see, I've cleared out the area, prepared it. So let's start a build. I will focus this video on the parts that are applicable to most garages or small workshops. The functions that will make the booth safe, but also make it a good paint booth that delivers high quality paint jobs. As I primarily will be painting bike frames, I set the size of the booth to 160 by 180 centimeters. That gives me enough space to move around the frame without taking too much space in the workshop. I build the walls out of regular wooden rules and OSB board, nothing special. And I will insert some plastic glass for windows. I use the existing roof and floor, but I cover the floor with protective cardboard. Safety is a crucial part when building a paint booth. Any electrical device can cause a spark and needs to be considered. But what are the risks? To make a long story short, gases and solvents need to be in a certain concentration to be flammable. If the concentration is too low, they won't explode or burn. And the same thing if they are too high. Different solvents and gases have different limits, but it's usually quite a high level needed to reach the lower limit. At that point, the concentration is usually visible in the air and it will affect your eyes and even your skin. However, I have no possibility to measure the concentration and as I will be using aerosol cans that have propellant gases that add to the concentration in the air, I better be safe than sorry. Therefore, I will eliminate as many risk factors as possible in terms of sparks and fire hazards. It won't be 100% safe, but neither is crossing the street. The walls and door is in place and I have also leveled out any uneven surfaces with putty. Next up is to seal up the booth because this will be an under pressure booth and the fan will drag all the air into the booth from the outside. And I want all the air to come through the filtered intake. And if I don't seal it up perfectly, it will come in air from any, any other hole or gap there is. And that will also drag in contaminations and dust and we don't want that. So let's get going with the sealant. I use an acrylic latex sealer. Don't use a silicone based sealer as that can contaminate your paint projects later on. I fill all the gaps and corners where there's the slightest chance of air getting in. The door is the weak spot as I can't seal it with a permanent sealer. So I'm gonna use this rubber sealing to seal it up and I'm also gonna use these window locks on the inside to make sure that the door get nice and tightly sealed. However, that's gonna have to wait until I have painted the door. So let's get going with that. To get it light and for a nice look, I paint the booth. I paint the base white to even out the different colors I'm painting over. Then I use a light gray paint. Avoid any paint with colors as they will affect the look of the object you're painting in the booth later on. Stick to the gray scale. Once the paint is dry, I seal up the door. The lights in the paint booth are very important, both to get the right amount of light as well as the light temperature, but they are a source of danger. The fixtures I have chosen are waterproof. It's not the same thing as explosion proof. However, I will be painting in very short sessions and it's a good ventilated area. So the risk that gases get into these pipes and that reach the lower limit are very small. So let's get them up. I installed four fixtures with a total of 11,520 lumen and the temperature of the light will be at 6,000 Kelvin, which is very close to daylight. 
The light colors is important since the colors you paint on the frame will look very different in warm light temperatures like 2000 or 4000 Kelvin. With daylight temperatures, the colors will look like they do outside. It's time for the ventilation and to extract all the air out of the booth and out of the workshop in a good way, I will replace this window with a fan box that I'm about to build. Now that will create an under pressure in the booth and to make sure that I get air into the booth, this will become an intake over here. Now, just to get nice and clean air in the booth, I will install an intake filter here. I haven't received it yet, but that's where all the air will enter the booth. The fan I will be using is this one and it has a capacity of 1080 cubic meters per hour. And given that the volume of my booth is about seven cubic meters, it will change the air in the booth two and a half times per minute, which is pretty good. The fan is another risk factor and regular household fans can cause sparks that will ignite fumes and and lead to an explosion. So this one is of course explosion proof. Now I will put links to all the key materials I use in this booth in the description below. So make sure you check it out if you want some good advice on what to use. But now I'm going to continue on building my fan box. So let's get to work. In my case, I replace a window and thereby I have a template for the size of the fan box. So the most important measurement for me is to get the side of the box facing into the booth to the correct size. side of the box facing out will be exposed to all kinds of weather. I paint it with a water-based window paint from the local hardware store and I seal it up properly so no moisture get into the box. The fan box is done and I have removed the window behind me. I've also sealed off the edges around the window with a window sealer to make it airtight. Now I didn't want to seal it with a permanent sealer as I want to be able to put the window back in place again. I will tighten it with these window locks to get it really nice and tight. So let's just hope it fits. Luckily my measurements were correct and the box fit nicely. I then tighten it with the window locks and note that it seals great. Once reassured that it's sealed, I install the electricity. The filters have arrived and I have this uh, intake filter. It's pre-cut, so I'm just gonna fit it right up there. And then we have this paint trap. It's not cut yet, so I'm gonna have to do it myself. And I'm wearing gloves when I'm touching this because the paint trap is made out of glass fiber and it's not very comfy to touch with your bare hands. So yeah, just a heads up. So yeah, let's get going. <laughs> Alright, the ventilation and filters are in place and the paint booth is complete. So let's just start it up and give it a try. We got this paper towel here just to demonstrate the suction of the fan. And as you can see, it sucks really good. So I think this is going to be great. Now I will probably make improvements over time, but in my future projects, I can work in peace, confidently assured that my family is safe upstairs and that my paint jobs will be free from contamination and dust.
Now, if you're gonna paint a bike frame, you should really check out this video over here. And if this video gave you value, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in my next DIY bike project. Cheers.